now 81. The former prime minister, Kintum Soke, retired, but says he is not tired. During the visit to his country home in Bakijura village, Kalungu district, Musoke took us around his farm to show us his life after retirement. There is an expanse of land on which he has grown coffee and bananas and which also provides a home for his herd. Kintu Musoke says his life is simple but he thinks deep and wide. When we finally sat down, Kintu Musoke told us how it all began, how he became politically awake at the age of 11 in 1949 when Ignatius Musazi and Brother Semakura Mulumba led a farmers' movement demonstration. Musazi mobilized a boycott on the sale of the farmers' produce to Asians who they accused of cheating them. Brother to my father, Simeon Kintu was arrested among the many rioters. In 1949, and not only that, taken there and sentenced him to eight years imprisonment. So from that date, I've never gone backward. After his secondary school at King's College, Buddo, Kintu went on to university in New Delhi, where he got a bachelor's in political science, philosophy and journalism, and a master's degree in international relations. It was in India where he met Johnny Kakonge, Vidandi Sali, and Kirunda Kivajinja, who all became politicians. After India, the four came back to Uganda, determined to change the way the country was being governed. That's how I became politically committed. I have never had any other employment. As a journalist, Kintu Musoke founded papers that included the African pilot and the weekly topic. The four and many others were the brains behind the formation of UPC. He says the India group was thought to be extremely radical because of their socialism ideas, which forced party leader Dr. Milton Obote to expel them. Just a few years later, Obote was hosted in a military coup and Idi Amin Dada became president. But Kintum Soke and his group were still not safe. He was arrested and taken to Makinde military barracks. I went at the same time as Benedict Kiwanuka and Karim Muzo and others. My colleagues, uh, uh, the others didn't come back. Me and a few survived the means making in the prison. After enduring the torture and surviving death in custody, Kintum Soke came out more determined to fight the regime. I saw that even if it would be the devil fighting I mean, I would join the devil. <laughs> When Obote returned to power, Kintu and others formed the Uganda Patriotic Movement Party, which chose Yoweri Museveni as its president. They participated in the 1980 elections, but lost to Obote. The UPM governing council hmm, leadership met at my house. In the meeting at Kintu's house in Ilunguja, where Yoweri Museveni, Ruhakana Rugunda, Elia Kategaya, Vidani Sari, Matia Kasaja, Bakulu Mpaji, and their mama Mbabazi, among others. He asked, colleagues, we have decided this and that and that. What if this fool robot decides to arrest us? Members told him how they would continue with the struggle, but Museveni's mind was made up. When his car had arrived to fetch him, he said, gentlemen, I will not offer myself for arrest, I will fight him. I think that was the real declaration of who to us, it's the UPM people. And that was the last meeting of, U, of UPM. It has never met it has never met <laughs> And he left. The next thing we heard that he was in Kawamba. But immediately after M7 had left, Obote's government soldiers arrived in Lunguja in search of Kintu. And for them, they mistook Kintu for the other name I forget now. And attacked this house and killed these four people. So from there, I went into urban hiding. Kintu Msoke could not go to the bush because he, Kivedinda and Bidandi Sari were running a printing press in Katwe called Sapoba. He also helped a number of people who were being hunted by Obote to flee into exile in different countries. After the Gorilla War in 1980s, Kintum Soke left Kampala and returned to Masaka. 
He represented Kalung district in parliament for 12 years. He served as minister for information for four years, also becoming the first minister for the presidency. While serving as a member of the Constituent Assembly, he was appointed prime minister, a position he held until retirement. Time came, I said, uh, I want to retire. I wanted to know how he managed to live a corrupt free life while serving in government. Nature provides enough for every man's needs, but not for every man's greed. During my time in the government, I met only my needs and kept my wants out. So why are there so many accusations of corruption against high-ranking government officials? The commitment we had, we came out to serve. But the president minister has come out to be served. Kintu Msoke, who was part of the struggle for an independent Uganda, suffered political persecution until he joined the Museveni with the hope of a positive change of affairs. I had hoped that NRM was going to end all the mess. Namely, that from now on, we shall change from one leader to another peacefully. But because lack of ideological commitment and lo a lack, lack of pro proper polit political party structures, we are not about to, to get there. And I regret that that is so. With the clock ticking towards the general election is in 2021, Kint does not think it will make any difference. If, the, if we have a peaceful election in 2021, we shall be moving towards that. But I don't see it yet. I see it, I, I, I'm scared about what will happen. If we don't peacefully change power from, from one person to another, the next thing is what? It's turmoil. Kintum Soke thinks that if the brands that help the NRM party come to power had remained united, Uganda would have remained on track with 10-point program that was meant to transform the country after the liberation war. But having lost Kizabesi, having lost Amanya Msega, having lost Sekategaya, having lost Vidansali, we are all scattered and Museveni remains alone. Because those who are now who are there, your type, your age mates, they can't, they can't. the man thinks faster than they do <laughs> on any issue. Agnes Nanduto, NTV, Living History.